Hello, welcome. My name is Estragon. I'm the designer of the Gem Wielder stack building game. And I want to make this little video to show you how it is played. I'm um, using the tabletop simulator mod that you can also try out for free. All right, so uh, let's uh, talk a little bit of, about the game in case you, you don't know anything about it. So it's a deck building game, a competitive deck building game for two players. And um, basically what you do is you draft, you start with um, 12 cards and your gem bearer, which is a special, uh, has a special ability. And during the course of the game, you will add a gem cards uh, to your deck, make it stronger, and you fight against the, the other player using a different gem bearer. Um, right, so the gem bearer, the, the mod has already taken care um, of the setup for us. So we have our gem cards here, or we shuffle them, and our pile of sources. Sources are a special card and that generates the principal resource you use for many abilities, power. Um, we have our pile of gems. So those are the gems that during the course of the game we can uh, take and add and place on our gem bearer. Right. Um, you can have up to five uh, gems on your gem bearer. And there are 25 uh, gems. Um, that come in five different varieties or colors. So you can have any kind of combination of those. Um, right. um, we start with 50 life each player. Once it reaches zero, you lose the game. And this little counter here is to track the power resource. So we start with zero power. Um, usually we would determine the starting player at random. And the first player would have the choice of what gem bearer uh, to take. And each gem bearer comes with a gem, a gem bearer weapon card deck attached. We will shuffle those as well. And I will just play a little game against myself. I, th I find that it's easiest to explain games and seeing them played, and it's also more fun to watch. So I'll. I'll Choose player one. Um, both players will draw five cards. And then we will turn over five of the gem cards and form the draft room. So let me explain to you uh, those gem cards. And this is an attack, attack card called Power Search, and it has an attack value of three, as indicated in the top uh, right corner. And it has a special ability that when your attack is successful and you hit, I will explain this later, then the defender loses one power. There are also defense cards like this one, High Ground. It has a defense value of two, and when you are attacked and the defense setup is revealed, as I will explain later, the attacker loses one life. And we are lucky that we have all types here in the first uh, flop, which is not uh, it's a coincidence. We have a modification uh, called Gunbot. Modification is a card that once you play it, it stays on your board permanently and they have passive or active abilities. In this case, Gunbot has a, a usable ability, so we can pay to power and use Gunbot, uh, which means we turn it sideways to mark that it has been used, and then we can deal two damage to a target player of the choice. And lastly, we have skills. Skills are one-time effects. We play it, we can pay if there is a cost, like, like in this case, we would have to pay two power to um, trigger this effect. Then we can deal two damage to target player um, and gain two life. And after the effect has resolved, it goes to our discard pile. And right, let's look at our hand. 
So uh, the starting hand is quite uh, starting decks have very basic cards and especially the hammer is very simple. You have those stronger attack cards, heavy strikes, you have normal attack cards, strikes and block cards. Now um, player two, this would be the pistol in this case, would have the option to uh, say this is too strong for player one. I want uh, five new cards. And then we would shuffle those five cards back into the gem card decks and flop, pick a new flop. In this case, it's quite good for player one, so, but it's playable for player two. So um, just for also for simplicity's sake, let us say uh, pistol accepts and um, this, this is the flop we go with. So how does the turn play out? Um, there is the draft phase, followed by the main phase, followed by the attack phase, and the draw phase lastly. So it's four phases, and they all are quite straightforward. Let's start with the draft phase. In the draft phase, I uh, firstly, this doesn't come into play until later, but firstly, I would have the option to remove any card from here that none of us will ever be able to draft in this game. So down below, you see those um, symbols, those diamond-shaped symbols. Those indicate how many gems um, I need in order to draft this card. Drafting this card means taking it and placing it on my discard pile. And once my uh, deck is empty, the discard pile will be shuffled and uh, my new, newly acquired card will find its way into my deck. So um, not being able to take any of these, this can only occur once I have taken, both players have taken three gems at least, and then um, some of those cards won't be available anymore. You will see what I mean. So uh, secondly, I can place one of these gems onto my gem bearer, unless I already have five gems on my gem bearer. So this is free and it's there still, this is a permanent choice. So if I decide to take, which I will, an amber, I place it there and this will stay there for the rest of the game. Nothing can change that. Um, and I have laid the first stone, the foundation for my combination of gems I will be playing. And um, I can only afford with my ember this card, Superior Weaponry, which as of now only has to attack because I don't control two or more modifications. But I'm uh, hopeful that I will be able to achieve this condition and then it will be a very strong attack card. All right. Um, right, so that's the draft phase. I also have the option to take source in addition to uh, the, the drafted card, and I will do that. Sources are, you should have a couple of sources in order to use my your abilities. You don't always have to take a source. Um, you can play with very few power, but in this case, I'm aiming to draft Gunbot next turn, and Gunbot uh, demands a lot of power because I can use this ability every turn, deal two damage, right? So the main phase. In the main phase, I can do a number of things in any order I please. Firstly, and I will do that right now, I can add a defense card to my defense setup. This means I will place it in front of me, face down. This will be revealed when my opponent attacks me. But until then, this is hidden to the opponent and only I know what's, what's beneath it. All right, I can also play skills um, in the main phase or play out modifications, but I don't have any. So the next phase is the attack phase. Um, and because I am the first player and I just started and my opponent didn't have any opportunity to lay down a defense setup. And I skip 
my attack first, actually. I cannot attack. I have to wait until next turn. So, um, and what's left? The draw phase. In the draw phase, I set all my modifications to ready. So all the modifications I've used will be set again upright and be ready for next turn. And I will draw until I have five cards in hand. So I have four cards. So I'll draw one, putting my card count to five. Um, yeah, that's my turn. So next up is player two. All right. So first of all, all cards will be removed that no one is ever going to be able to take, which is none. And then I didn't mention that, but uh, the draft row is filled up again with new cards. It's turned over. All right, so drain. So I have to consider now my strategy. I have uh, three options that seem viable here. Firstly, I could also take Ember um, because next turn my opponent would take another Ember and probably take one of these cards. But then would be my turn and I could take the other with a second Ember. So. I could contest one of these cards. Um, my other option would be to go um, Emerald and try to build a defense deck. But I will risk um, giving my opponent Drain as well, a very powerful skill. And I think my opponent will prioritize Ember anyway. So I'll just I'll just take an amethyst. I can't take this card yet because it requires two amethysts, but I can also already take a source, add it to my discard pile. Let's look at our hand. Yeah, that's the draft phase. So up to the main phase. I also have a defense card, quite a bit. And I have both. There are two explosive bullets in the pistol start deck. Those have free attack value, but if I use them as an attack card, they reduce my attack value by two, basically making them normal one attack value attack cards. Well, but they still have an attack value of three, and this comes in handy in combination with the pistol's uh, gem bearer ability. I can pay one power and discard one attack card to deal damage equal to its attack value to target opponent. So if I were to use this on my explosive bullets, I would deal three damage. The only problem is I don't have any power yet. Um, right, so I can either use them to attack for two, getting six minus four to attack, um, or I could um, save them for later until I have power. But the problem with that is I would only draw three cards. So I will just attack and I will draw five new cards, right? So, and it allows me to explain you to attack phase. All right, so I place those cards in front of me or show them to my opponent. And I say, I attack you for two, right? Six minus the reduction is two. What happens then? Um, my opponent flips over his defense. Um, effects happen, so my attack value is reduced. This doesn't have an effect, right? Um, after that, we compare attack value to defense value. So there's one defense value. We add up all these, those cards, which is just one card. And I have an attack value of two. And I deal one damage, that, uh, like the, the, the excess damage I deal to my opponent. After this has been resolved, all the cards go to the discard pile and I draw five new cards. Right, and this is my turn. Right, so uh, nothing gets revealed because my opponent didn't take any card, but it's fine. Um, now I know I am safe from contestation, so I can take another Ember and one of those cards and my opponent won't be able to contest my other card because they won't be quick enough 
I need two chimes for those. And also I know I will draw five new cards, but this discard pile won't be shuffled um, until next turn, so I can probably get both of those cards plus I choose. But I will just take Gunbot, I will take another source to, to power my Gunbot, and that's my draft phase. Right, so I place my defense setup down and I attack for two, four, five, six attack value. Defense setup gets revealed. So uh, the pistol is using one special card, hide, which puts their defense value to four. And in case of a miss, they would also gain one life, but I have six attack, they have four defense, so they take two damage. This all goes to the discard pile, and I draw five new cards. And one there. So it's Rat's turn again. Those also go to the discard pile. After combat is resolved, everything goes to the discard pile. So one new card is revealed, another green card. So my opponent cannot anymore take uh, drain from me, so I don't necessarily have to take it right away. I could also uh, I could also take an emerald, and I will do that, and take this uh, belladonna. I can play this on myself to lose one life and gain four power, which makes it much more efficient than a regular source, which only gains two power for one card. Um, or you can also play it on your opponent for one damage, but uh, they, gain, they gain power. I will mostly use it on myself. So I'll take this. And in case my opponent uh, would take Amethyst now, I am faster than him. I can, t I can take Drain away from them, so they, they won't do that. All right, so main phase. I place down my defense and I attack. For three, defense is revealed. It's just one, means two damage. Easy. All right. So now it gets interesting. I have to draw five cards, but there are only two left. So I draw one. Up one, two cards. And now I have to whip this around, shuffle. I place it there and draw the rest of the cards. So it's, if any effect wants you to draw a card or use a card or look at a card that's there and there is no card left, this card pile gets shuffled, reforms your deck. Yeah, that's the turn. I think by now you should see how this all goes. So this card is revealed. Ah, save fire card. Safe fire is quite nice uh, with with Ember because I have Gunbot and Blue is quite good in generating power. Also, this card is quite efficient. It gives me two power. It also gains me uh, two defense value and also gains me two power at the same time. So that's quite nice. And there is, well, I could also take Power Search right away. It's a strong attack card. That's the, the more aggressive option. But I risk uh, losing power. My opponent could take uh, absorb away from me. So I don't want that, so I'm going to be safe. I take absorb. And I think I have a very good deck in the making. And why jeopardize this? Why, why rush it, right? All right. So I place down my defense. So. So I don't know what's underneath this. It could be two defense value or, or three. And I have two attack cards. My special ability as a hammer is if my attack value is equal to defender's clock value, I gain one attack value. So in the likely case that this is just two, I would gain one and I would still deal one damage. So that's nice. So I will attack with both. This gets revealed. He has two, my attack value is increased by one, so they take one damage. Right. 
All right. I draw one card, flip this over, shuffle, draw the rest of the cards, and it's players, red players' turn. So let's look up. Look what we get. Uh, we get recycle. So this card is quite good early on. It allows you to scrap a card from your hand, a discard pile, to draw one card. Uh, to scrap means uh, remove from the game. So you can thin out your deck, remove weak uh, starting cards, and therefore draw your strong uh, gem cards that you added or your special ability cards more often. So that's quite, ni quite nice, especially early on. And it even has the ability for one power to scrap itself. So if I don't need it anymore, I can just pay one power and scrap itself. Same goes for sources, by the way. Um, you can scrap those. If you play a source, you gain two power, and then you could pay two power, putting your turn at zero to scrap the source. So just in case uh, you took too many sources or you found a more efficient way to generate power, that's what you can do. All right. So I could be mean here and uh, just take this recycle for myself because I still have slots and it's my turn. So I could take an ember and, and snatch this away from, from the hammer. Hmm. Should I do that? Well, 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 well. Yeah, why not? I mean, it's, it comes at a price because I, I now have to be careful if I take Drain, I can no longer take free Emerald cards, for example. But I can still take a free Amethyst at the moment, so this is fine. I don't think I need another source because I have Belladonna, so I have quite a bit of power. Flip over, defense setup, you know the drill. Attack with everything for four. Pawn has three, takes one damage. So I won't play out the game in its entirety, but let's play on a bit longer so you see how the how the power and skill usage comes into play. Alright, so it's blue, blue player's turn. While developing the game, I've played uh, quite a bit against myself. It's a great way to test out how new cards work. Oh, it's our first ruby, Spark. Uh, for one power, can deal free damage to target player. That's quite efficient in terms of power conversion. One power, free damage, it's quite good. But, well, actually I could, I could just grab it. Why not? Grab Spark. It's a good card. I have the power generation. I will take another source because Spark also needs power. And as I've said, I have Gunbot. All right, so that's my draft phase. Now I have only one slot left. Uh, my last gem, I need to consider it carefully because then the combination for this game is really set. Second stone. All right, so it's the main phase. So I can play out my Gunbot. Just stays there. I can play a source to gain two power, but two power, and and I can use that power right away to shoot with gunbot. So I pay two power, turn it sideways, and my opponent takes two damage. And also I have a very strong attack, attack phase, four attack, one defense, one, two, three damage to my opponent. So it's going quite well. Turn my gunbot back to ready position, draw five cards. All right, and it's Brad's turn again. Look what we get. Ah. So this card is Electrify, a free attacker, very strong, and it adds source to our discard pile when we attack. Um, so, I forgot to put this away. So, this can be useful, but 
it often is you know, a disadvantage. Uh, it can add more sources to a discard pile than you want, and then you have to you can scrap them. There are also abilities that scrap them, and there is a card in blue that allows you a modification that allows you to scrap or add uh, a source to your discard pile. Well, my concern is uh, can I leave this to my opponent? Because they already have Foul Search, and if they get Electrified together with the Heavy Strikes, and they really need the sources, so the disadvantage isn't much of a problem. So it's unusual to play that many colors, but just because I don't want to give this card to my opponent, I will take Electrify away from them. Right, so what do I have here? Main phase. I won't take uh, another source, by the way, because I think I'm, I'm fine for now. Place my defense cards. Play Belladonna. Get one, two, three, four power. Take one damage. That's the, dis the disadvantage of Belladonna. It's a poisoned berry, after all. I'll play another source. So putting me to six power. Yeah, just, just in case. I didn't mention, but power is a resource that is uh, stored between rounds. So you can build quite a reserve of power and use it later. But if you build too much un unnecessary power, you just waste your resources. Right, my enemy doesn't have any defense. So my attack will be a sure hit and deal one damage. Right. And Draw two cards, flip over, shuffle, draw one, two, three more. Right. So I will do uh, one blue, one red, and then I'll call it a day. Because I think then you know, you, you, you have seen how, how this goes. So all cards are still possible to take for a player, so nothing gets removed. Ah. This is the card I've been talking about. So either you can use it to add a source to a discard pile, or you can scrap one source from the discard pile. I don't think it's that great for me. I would rather uh, keep the slot open for something else. Because if I were to take a second save fire, that would be it. And I don't think I need substation. I mean, yeah. My opponent might take it for uh, electrify, but that's fine. I will just take the, the straightforward power search. I mean, it would be a modification that would enable my superior weaponry, which is something to consider, but I haven't done it, so yeah, maybe that was a mistake. I don't know. I think it's fine. All right, let's play out um, my stuff. So. I'll place my defense card. Um, so you already see I maybe should have taken a bit more power, but um, I can't use Gunbot this turn. I don't have the power for it. But I can attack for two, four, five, nevertheless. Uh, two defense is one, two, three damage. I can draw four cards. Shuffle, fill up my hand. All right. So back to red. Fill up the draft draw. Uh, resupply. That's a very strong card for my opponent because they can play this on on Gunbot and use it again, uh, provided they have the power to use it. It's not that great. For me, because as of now, I don't have um, a modification to use this on. But it also draws a card. So even if I only get the modification later, which uh, it doesn't cost me anything, and I really don't want my opponent to have this, so I will take this, take it away from them. Yeah. Then I go to the main phase. 
place. Um, there is my defense setup, which is quite large this turn. And now I can use um, the gem bearer's ability because I have explosive bullets. And yeah, so I turn it sideways, pay one power, discard it, and deal three damage. One, two, three. Also, I can play Recycle. I should probably have done this before. And I can uh, scrap one of my cards here, put it here on the side on the pile of scrap cards. Oh, that's uh, face up. All right. And because I scrapped the card, I can uh, draw a card. So maybe my sequencing wasn't perfect. Well, it doesn't change anything in this case, but so I will still attack with this, even though I will only do. Oh, I thought I would do one damage, but actually they have three defense. So free attack, free defense. Firstly, this happens. I add a source to my discard pile. And then those effects happen. I gain two power. Okay. Two power. Right, and I don't deal any damage, so yeah, that's uh, that's a pity. Maybe maybe I shouldn't have attacked. But if I hadn't attacked, that's something uh, worth of note. Then the defense setup would have just stayed there, and they could add to it in the next turn. So it's always good if you can to attack, just to just to don't help your opponent in art that they can't. And yeah, makes everything easier for them if they don't join the attack. Well, um, as you can see, turns can escalate pretty quickly, and uh, um, uh, when I play with experienced players, games take sometimes 15 minutes or even less. Um, but turns can also get, it depends on the decks, if they aren't that aggressive, it can take, can combinations can come into play that, that take longer to play out. All right, All right so um, I hope everything is, is clear and you, you could follow everything well. And in case you have any questions that were left open, just just write an email or we're also quite active on Instagram and on Facebook. Just just write us and I'm happy to answer all the questions or I'm, I'm also happy to, to play a game if you like in Tabletop Simulator or at one of our events. Yeah. Right, so have fun with the game and may the gems favor you.